Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. In this video we're going to look at conditional formatting of icons. We're going to use this example of a site which has monthly data for two different years and what we've done is we've looked at the change from year one to year two for each of the months. So this is just a very simple formula looking at what the change is from year one to year two so some are positive and some are negative. And the first example we're going to look at is using conditional formatting. We're then going to go on to look at how you might do the same thing with custom formatting, which has some benefits that we'll cover later on in the video. However, for now, let's start with our conditional formatting example. So to conditional format with icons, you can come into this little drop down here. We can come to icon sets and we could use these directional arrows for this example. You'll notice that it's not come up quite right. And that's because it's looking at the percentage between the top and the bottom. So we're going to have to come in, come to manage rules, select the rule we want and click edit rule. And there's a number of options here we can change. So we can reverse the order of the icons if they're not coming up in the right order. In this example, they are. First of all, what we want to do is we want to change both these to number. And essentially what we want is anything above zero. So a positive change we want with the green arrow. We don't actually want the yellow arrow because nothing is actually at zero. And when it's below zero, we want it to be the red arrow. So actually it will work the way it's set up now. We could also select for this middle one having no cell icon. If we click OK and apply, immediately you can see here, we'll just close this window down, that your negatives have got this red arrow and the positives have the green arrow. Just popping back into that manage rules, we might not want to see the percentage because we want this to be visual representation. So if we come into edit rules, we can check on this show icon only box, clicking OK and applying. You can see now just your icons are showing. We're going to look at how to do the same thing with custom icons. Now, some of the reasons why you might want to do this is because when you use conditional formatting, it can actually, when you've got very large data sets, make your workbook extremely large. It can also, if you start copying and pasting data to elsewhere in your workbook and keeping that formatting, if we were to come back into our manage rules and select the entire worksheet, you can see now that you've got these on separate lines because they're referring to different cell values. And actually, if you're doing lots of chopping and changing in your workbook, this can get quite complex and difficult to track. I'm just going to undo that last step. And we're going to talk about custom formatting, which can make it a lot easier to create these icon sets and custom visual formatting in your Excel workbook. So what do I mean when I talk about custom formatting? So there's two ways you can get into your custom formatting. We can right click and come to format cells, or we can use the shortcut control on one. And this brings up this format cells box. And in your number tab under custom, there's all these different custom formats. we are given a brief overview of custom formats in another video, but essentially the way these work, they do look a bit scary. So with custom formats, you can have up to four parameters. The first is how you want your positive numbers formatted. The second is how you want your negative numbers formatted, the third your zeros, and the fourth your text. If you only put in the first parameter, it will just default to that type of formatting for them all. But with this, you can specify for the different types of numbers. So in this very simple example, what we want is we want some icons for our positive and some icons for our negative. But what exactly do we want? So let's start with going to our insert tab and coming over to our symbols. Now in this example, I'm going to come to windings and I'm going to pick some of the little arrows. So you can scroll up and down. You can see there's some arrows here that are very similar to the ones we used previously. So we want to include this up one and this down one, click insert. And you can see we've got our up and down arrows in here. And this is what we're going to use for our custom formats. So I'm just going to copy these and then select all my cells, control one and come to custom. And essentially what I'm going to want is I'm going to want that up arrow for the first parameter and that down arrow for the second parameter. So we're going to separate them with a semicolon and then we're going to wrap them up in some inverted commas, which tells us that it's text. And you can see it gives a little sample. Now I'll show you how to fix the fact that it's coming up with that E with the little accent over it. So you can see that that has come up that way. The reason that is, is we selected those icons from our windings list. So what we just need to do is we would need to format these cells as our windings. And you can see we've now got our little arrows. 
However, we also want to add color to our arrows. Now this can also be done with custom formatting. So we're going to hit control and one again. In the front part of each of these parameters, what we're going to do is we're going to open a square bracket and type in the color, close the square bracket. And then same on the second one, we want it to be red, close the bracket and hit enter. And you'll see we've got colors in there. Now we do find, and I've heard other people say this, this green color in Excel is a bit um, illuminous, shall we say? <laughs> So what you need to do or what you can do is you can search for Excel color indexes on Google and you will find either some images showing them or you can open a tab similar to this one. So this shows you a number of color indexes and you can see that it's got lots of different color values. So we've got the slightly luminous green. However, this number 10 might be a lot better. So to put that into our custom formatting, what we need to do is come back to here. And instead of typing green in here, what we want to do, take that out. We want to type color instead with the American spelling. And then we want to put in the number of the one that we've picked. So we're going to say a 10 here. And if we click OK, you can see they've updated to the darker green. This custom format can be done with any sort of icons and things in Excel. If you'd like to see some other examples, please do leave me a comment below and I can show you some other ways of using this custom formatting with icons. Some of the benefits include that you don't end up with these messy conditional formats, uh, very difficult to update when you're, when you're under managed rules. Actually, this is quite easy. If I were to type in, say, some positive and some negative numbers here, then select my formats, go to Format Painter and paste it. Straight away, those formats are pasted in. So it can be really, really quick to update new values into icons. So that's just been a very quick overview of two different methods of using icons in conditional and custom formatting. Do leave me any questions or anything you'd like to see in future videos in a comment below. Remember to like and subscribe and we look forward to seeing you next time.